play with. I think the median number of lands that I've registered in my constructor decks over the past year, it's definitely north of 28 and like might be north of 30. So I'd like to be able to cast my spells. But more than that, I'd like just be able to make land drops. This hand does not do it for me on, on either count. We get it. You played Greater Sword Tooth. <laughs> wayward Sword Tooth. I'll, I'll have you know. My Wayward Son. As you can tell, I haven't played it. Now you see, if you play a Wayward Sword Tooth, that ramps you into the Great Henge, which I think is what you were going for there. Nope, not a day in my life. A powerful interaction in Historic, perhaps, but uh, after Monday. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> but we uh, we see Carolyn mulligan into a more appealing hand here. I imagine one of the two four drops in Caressing Beast, and sure enough, that, that goes back. But uh, no one drop, but an otherwise decent curve and a Primal Might to maybe pick off a, a Gilded Goose or Mayhem Devil. Right, a lot of the time, that all you really want with this is getting out early on the battlefield and then being able to keep the on the back foot. No need to Primal Might that, Goose. We we have other plans for it. Oh! <laughs> and, he, and here's the trailer crumb. So, uh, Yuki setting his engine up, but it looks like he doesn't have too many cards left in reserve. And we are going to play a 3-2 that is going to kill the Gilded Goose for free. So this is this is how you draw it up if you're Carolyn. You know, not to be too old fogey, but back in my day, our flame tongue Kavus cost four. See, look, card design has moved a long way since then, and this is just the new name of the game, so we, we all have to get used to it. Uh, but Gem Razor, on the following turn, can follow it up, uh, eating that trail of crumbs for free too, and uh, applying more pressure. Right, and this actually does a lot to show why the green cards are not the way that you want to be attacking these aggressive strategies. Yeah, we can Primal Might that uh, that Priest too if we want it, but really no need to right now. There's uh, no, no creature fodder to uh, to feed to the Priest. I think you just want to go ahead and get it off the battlefield as soon as you can. Yeah, Prioritizing I mean, just answering that before anyone gets the chance to use it is going to be crucial for Kavanaugh. Yeah, I don't hate it. And hey, what is that trade of crumbs doing for Ishikawa right now? Exactly. There's a point when you're ahead on the battlefield, you don't really mind your opponent spending a bunch of mana on just drawing cards. Right. And now we have an even better uh, gem raiser target if we want it. And that which right. is up. Yes, this is just an incredible show of patience from Kavanaugh, really prioritizing answering the more problematic permanent. And that common familiar, much worse now at containing uh, that Claw Harpooner, which will now have Trample and Reach again, double Reach. Not sure how that works exactly. Uh, Very but... long arms would put a sloth <laughs> to shame. So now we're, we're crunching in for four damage as well. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, exactly the kind of start that the Kavanaugh needs and very punishing for Ishikawa, who it seems like was already on kind of a weak draw, maybe had to go to, to six or to five cards. And uh, this is exactly what he does not want to see. A lot of what's going on here is just seeing these kind of narrow mono green reactive cards getting their incidental value against things like Gilded Goose, like Witch's Oven, these things that green is great at answering on top of the normal amount of pressure Ooh. they would have. Look at that Primal Might. And so this, you know, we've seen cards like Prey Upon in these green Alka decks. Now we get Prey Upon plus a Fireball. You know, we get to, and, and you know, Karen has drawn a lot of lands in this game. If we want to, we can just fire this up and go upstairs, crunching for a whole bunch of damage. Jeez. We'll hit that, we'll hit you. And now that Gem Razor is potentially lethal, and that Questing Beast is lethal too. That is so much damage here. And it even doesn't... It doesn't give Yuki the ability to know that there's a questing beast hiding out in Kavanaugh's hand. So he's not going to play around anything like that. If he even can at this point, you know, with how limited his uh, his resources are. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll play a 1-1, we'll play another 1-1, one, one, we'll gain a life. Uh, but this, this questing beast is going to put this game out of reach, I think. Oh, absolutely. This is a spot where that thing having its own version of evasion is going to seal this game for Carolyn Kavanaugh. We can also make a 3-3 Sun Call 7 with the help of that Castle Garen brick. Ooh. And so I is that believe exact this is lethal season? already. Yeah. Ooh, you don't even need anything else. Exact damage. And there it is. So... Carolyn Kavanaugh going to win a quick game one with this Monogreen Green Agra deck. Um, and I imagine as we go to sidewinding here, we're going to see her load up on 
you know, ram through, uh, more kind of redundancy for that, that fight effect. Right. Both of the effects that we saw that game just really look incredibly impressive. Gym Razor and fight effects. So things like Ram Through really just defined what won that game for Kavanaugh. And I would expect her to lean into them even more going into the sideboard games. At the risk of tempting fate, this kind of seemed like a good great hand matchup. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you imply the Great Hinge might ever end up on the battlefield? Well, hey, it's in the deck, and that, that's why we put cards in our deck, to, to draw them, right? Mm, mm, see, no, don't don't highlight it. Get it. Okay. There it is. There it is, on the bench, right where it belongs. <laughs> and the, the, the Nissa coming out there, too. Uh, maybe thinking that, you know, you're maybe not going to have uh, the time or the mana to really effectively deploy that, or that... Uh, is easy to just kind of pick it off with removal spells. Right, this is the kind of matchup where ultimately you don't really want those kinds of effects in your deck. You don't want things that lean on having other cards when a deck full of Mayhem, Devil, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Noxious Grasp, etc. is going to be better at interacting in your post-sideboard games. Absolutely. Uh, so focusing on on uh, Carolyn's side one here, Love Strike Beast coming out of the deck, and that's a card which on the surface, might seem like it's good against Sacrifice, where versus Priest of the Gone Guard, you, you have a 1-1 one, one around that you can you can feed to it. But at that point, you're then left with a 5-5 five, five that's just hanging out. It's not really doing anything, and you need to be applying consistent pressure in the matchup. Right, and another thing in this matchup is that you very frequently just want to get your X-1 creatures out because they're so weak against Mayhem Devil. Exactly, and you know you have a power collector. You want that to be as big as possible. That's that's the point. That's the the idea behind the deck. So uh, you can't kind of like find a free one one somewhere to, to power it up again. This is a tough mulligan to evaluate on Kavanaugh's side because you have so many things that lead to having great draws, but you are just missing something to grow that power collector and check something like Preach of the Forgotten Gods. Yeah, it's very easy to see how this hand run away with the game with the right draws, and also easy to see how this hand just falls apart and looks like a ridiculous keep. That said, I like the keep. I think you have enough uh, cheap creatures that if you find one, you know, this hand otherwise has all the ingredients you need. Okay, well, how do you feel about a gem razor off the top? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, ask me again if there's a trailer crumbs in play at the end of uh, <laughs> turn two or, or something similar. But hey, what if it, there's a witch's oven? How about that one? Well, well, we'll take that one too. But even in the worst case, we, we can mutate. We can uh, attack before. That's fine. Oh, well, we can't mutate just yet. Ooh, okay. And, and uh, <laughs> even more redundancy uh, on the on the fight effect. So, you know, this is a, a crucial turn for Kavanaugh. If, if she can untap and successfully mutate on the Pearl Collector, now she has a threat, she's dealt with the Witch's Oven, and any creatures that Ichikawa plays will just be uh, removed in short order. That said, you know, if Ichikawa can remove this power collector, then we're doing a whole lot of nothing this game. Uh, yeah, this is a really scary situation if you're in Kavanaugh's seat. You know that you're really kind of just holding on by a thread here. So this is a big turn. Gotta feel like there's something like a mayhem devil coming down at this point. Fetching that tapped mountain is a big signal when yeah. Ichikawa doesn't have any green sources on the battlefield yet. There's a green source, but it's tapped, so... Now, the way that mutate works, if Carolyn goes for, for the mutate and the power is removed in response, you still get the gem razor left behind, so you don't get the full value out of it, but you'll take it. You'll, you'll happily uh, have that 4-4 around. Right, and this is a tough spot where you may want to get the one extra mm -hmm. point in just to try and get some damage in, but if you think four is just enough more damage that's worth the risk, you do it pre-combat. And this is an interesting spot for Yuki, where if, if he could see Carolyn's hand, you would want to eliminate before she even had the chance to try and mutate to, to stop that line from happening, but otherwise, you know, if you, you remove the Pearl Collector and then Carolyn follows up with just a generic good three drop, then you, you uh, have some severe regrets. So I think Yuki made uh, the right play there too. Right, eliminate just looks embarrassing on the pelt collector if Carolyn follows up with something in the vein of Yorvo. So now this is, this is an interesting call too, where Carolyn could try to double up on the gem raisers to eat the oven, but the oven's not really doing much at this point, and you want that second four four uh, to you know to fight or to put counters onto or just to to go wide. Right, there isn't anything in the way of any catch-all sweeper that Ishikawa has available here. And Corvold 
right now the biggest thing on that board, but that Primal Might is going to oh, change that real soon. That is one big dinosaur. So we're boosting this up to an uh, to an 8 8 and we're attacking for 12. This game is basically <sighs> That's almost so over. so much damage, yeah. We're about to see Jakawa go down to 3. Which means even that mobilized district is lethal too, if somehow the gem raises are both dealt with. Oh, unbelievable. And this just goes to show the strength uh, and the staying power of this mono green deck is these cards actually can just hang into the mid game. Yeah, and these games have been a fantastic advertisement for Primal Might. You know, a card which often is kind of like a double fireball. You're killing their thing and not outright killing them, but getting them pretty close though at the same time. Oh yeah, it really is just the green searing blaze in a lot of respects. And so often, you have these fight effects which your thing just isn't large enough to, to tag theirs, but with Primal Might, it basically is almost all of the time. Exactly. When your deck is just full of 4-4s, four of 5-5s, five and so on, you're, you're not going to struggle to even go over the top of something as big as an Uro. Absolutely. And so th this is the classic, do I have any options, uh, tank for, for Ishikawa. Right, with 8 power worth of trample, he needs to make something happen right now. Both of these creatures are lethal. Yeah, and this John Sacrifice deck, if it gets all of its things going, is incredibly powerful, but it is also quite clunky. And you, you see that really come into play here, and you see how the Mono Green deck is able to exploit it in a way that it isn't against the Ragnar Sacrifice deck, which is much lower to the ground, much more able to interact with and pick off these uh, cheap threats. Exactly. This Jun Sacrifice deck that Yuki's brought to the table is something that just doesn't quite have as many options available to it on a given turn. How about a third gen Razor? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about Ramthru's additional text against I, that? I like it. Oh yeah, against any of these cards. Oh, we're getting a, a concerned citizen uh, entering uh, the combat zone here. Oh, it is mobilized. But but crucially, District has Vigilance, so Karen can attack and also go for the, the Ram Through. Oh, Ram Through is really just showing why it's so powerful right now. Yeah, between Primal Might and Ram Through, this mono green deck somehow has some of the best removal spells in the format at this point. Yeah, if you don't have ways to regularly check the creatures on the battlefield, these are just so strong. Ram through is better than Heartless Act in a lot of cases. This one included. Would you say it's better than Glass Casket? Oh, easily. That's just not even close. Look at all these or, gem racers. Who cares or, about Glass Casket? Or any white removal spell of your choice. Any white card of your choice, really. <laughs> and yeah, there it is. So 